Hello, everyone. Welcome to the last day of the workshop. Uh, Simone will be telling us about why tri triplicity matters. Yeah, thank you. OK, so uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Simone Ceppi. I'm from Milan. I'm a third year PhD student. I'm working with Giuseppe Lodato, Nicolas Coelho, uh, and many others. And first of all, let me thank the organizer for having me here this morning. Today, I would like to present you some recent results about polar alignment in hierarchical triple systems and about what we can learn um, using multiplicity um, about the formation of stars and uh, stellar systems. Uh, so let me also thank uh, uh, Nico and Mike and the others that presented this plot uh, in this week so that my presentation, well, my introduction will be shorter and easier. Uh, I just want to briefly mention again that what we know when we look at surveys of young stellar object is that in young stellar populations, we have a lot of multiple stellar systems, so systems with more than one star. Actually, they are the majority when we go in populations that are younger than one million years. And in addition, uh, a lot of these multiple stellar systems, this is a plot by Jofner et al. from the 57 chapter. Here we have the mass of the heaviest star of the system. Um, and here we have the um, multiplicity fractions, so the ratio between the number of binaries, triples, and so on over the total number of systems. These um, crosses and uh, the triple high order fraction, so the <clears throat> fraction within a number of triples, quadruples, and so on over the number of systems in the population, this one. And we see that there are a lot of multiple cellular systems, a lot of them have more than two stars, and actually these are, these, this is for field stars. So in young population, we expect also uh, higher uh, fractions. And we see also in the plot before actually uh, that multiplicity is decreasing with time and I was not sure to be allowed to show this uh, picture, uh, this um, image, because I mean, it's an SPH and G simulation, but uh, this is a sim an SPH simulation of the collapse of a molecular cloud. And also numerically, we found that we find that we uh, form a lot of multiple cellular system in this collapse, um, and a lot of them have, have more than two, than two stars. The multiplicity is decreasing with time, and there is a general chaotic environment in which we have different uh, direction for the different angular momentum of systems and disks and so on. Um, the multiplicity frequency of a, of a population is decreasing uh, because you cannot take a bunch of stars, put them together, and obtain a stable configuration. The uh, general configuration for a system with more than two stars is um, unstable and leads to the ejection of the lightest body from the system. Uh, but we observe stable configuration that are hierarchical configurations that are made of nested binary orbits. For example, this is a hierarchical triple in which we have an inner binary, M1 and MB, that is orbited at long distance by MC um, in an outer orbit. And the stability of the system is granted by the fact that the semi-major axis of the inner binary is way smaller than the semi-major axis of the outer binary. And in this way, there are no exchanges of energy between different hierarchical levels. So uh, given that each hierarchical level has uh, its own fixed energy, we can define a set of orbital parameters, binary orbital parameters, um, at least instant instantaneously, and we'll discuss this in a, this in a second. And so we have a semi-major axis and eccentricity and so on for each hierarchical level, the outer one and the inner one. But even if they uh, do not exchange energy, they exchange angular momentum. And so the um, orbital parameters of these systems of each hierarchical level evolve with time on a secular time scale. Uh, so for example, what happens is that the uh, eccentricity vector uh, of each hierarchical level, E2 and E1, uh, processes with time, uh, change direction with time. And also, if the outer and the inner orbit are not aligned, are misaligned, um, under the right condition, they can oscillate. Uh, and also their eccentricity oscillates with time. Uh, so the point is that at zero order, uh, each hierarchical level behave as a binary, but actually uh, they are not. There are things that are going on that are not, um, um, that are typical of uh, hierarchical systems. Uh, so just to give you uh, some example, uh, this is Digitauri A that were discussed, uh, was discussed yesterday by Claudia. And this is the exact system that we're talking about, um, is a hierarchical triple, actually is part of a quintuple system. So there is a, an additional binary that is orbiting the center of mass of this triple here. And we have this uh, very well studied um, accretion disk that we observed with a lot of techniques. And the problem with this system is that uh, we are not sure about the um, astrometry of the system. And so Claudia is trying to constrain better the astrometry 
um, using other dynamical simulations. And we're finding that we have a, a mildly misaligned configuration uh, in agreement with pre pre previous works, but with in very interesting inside, insights. Uh, this is another very famous uh, hierarchical triple system. Uh, in this case, we have a well-studied disk. We know pretty well the geometry of the disk and also the, um, the orbital parameters of the triple. So this is a very nice laboratory for study this kind of systems. The point is that uh, all these kind of system form through different uh, channels of formation. Uh, so we have filament fragmentation, for example, core fragmentation, disk fragmentation, and capture, and these are I mean, they summarize very well what can happen in a molecular cloud. And each of these channels of formation has different, uh, leaves different signatures on the population that they form of multiple solar systems, and also have different um, efficiency in forming multiple solar systems. And these signatures and uh, efficiency depend on the properties of the initial condition for the formation of the stars. So in the end, the, the properties of the molecular cloud. So, what I think it's very interesting is that studying distribution of parameters uh, of multiple stellar systems, we um, are able to um, say something about the initial condition that are harder to spot and to observe. And particularly in this uh, talk, I would like to focus on the distribution of the um, mutual angle between the mutual inclination between an accretion disk and a multiple stellar system orbit. So let's briefly summarize what happened when we have a circum uh, binary disk that is tilted. Uh, let's suppose that the orbital plane of the binary is uh, parallel to the floor, and that's why I took this. Um, if we have a circum binary disk that is tilted uh, with respect to the binary orbital plane, um, the disk can follow two paths, basically. And this depends mainly on the initial inclination between the disk and the binary orbital plane. If the disk is uh, lowly misaligned in the beginning, and uh, or the um, um, binary orbit is circular, the disk will slowly uh, go uh, coplanar on, on a viscous time scale. And at the same time, the longitude of ascending node of the disk will process with time. So the disk will, be, will process like this and uh, will go coplanar. But uh, if the um, initial misalignment is above a critical threshold, that will, I'll discuss this in a bit, um, the disk will quickly raise its inclination um, to 90 degrees, will lock in a perpendicular, in a polar configuration with respect to the binary plane, and the um, longitude of ascending knot will liberate. So the disk will do something like this, uh, locked in a, a polar configuration. And this happens when, as I said, the uh, inclination of the disk is above a critical threshold that uh, mainly depends on the eccentricity of the inner binary. And so the more the binary is eccentric, the lower is this threshold. And if we look at how mutual inclinations uh, distribute, uh, distribute um, in system that we uh, observe, this is a um, collection that Chicala in 2019 made of all the disks for which we know uh, pretty well the angle between the disk plane and the orbital plane. Uh, features seems to fit. This is beta, the mutual inclination. And this is the orbit eccentricity, the orbit of the, um, the, the eccentricity of the orbit that the disk is orbiting around. And feature seems to fit because we have a small population of disks that are coplanar, so that uh, like derived from this kind of process, and a subpopulation of disks that are uh, slowly going towards a coplanar configuration, uh, so like in a viscous time scale. And we have a small population of disks that are highly misaligned, that possibly are disks that are um, going polar or are polar. But if we look closely to this plot, uh, here I mark with green uh, points disks that are orbiting a pure binary system, and so uh, with no additional companions, and in black disks that are orbiting in system with more than two stars, so a system that, has, that have um, more than two stars in the cavity or an additional companion outside the disk. We see that we have two distinct populations. Um, the pure binary population, so the green points, are mostly coplanar, while a system with more than two stars are mostly misaligned. And also we have um, highly misaligned systems, only around a system with more than two stars. And actually the only disk that we know for sure is in a polar configuration, and we, we discussed this in this, work, in this workshop, is HD98800, uh, that is a disk orbiting an inner binary of an hierarchical quadrupole. And so we wondered how uh, polar alignment work 
uh, in uh, in system with more than two stars. And so let, let's first discuss how polar element works in binary. Uh, the point is that the angular momentum of the disk tries to align with the eccentricity vector of the binary. And so we have the binary orbit, the eccentricity vector lies along the same major axis and um, it points toward the pericenter. And if the angular momentum of the disk aligns with the binary eccentricity vector, um, the disk will end up in a, in a perpendicular polar configuration. The problem with triples is that the eccentricity vector is processing with time. And so uh, in order for polar alignment to occur, uh, the um, time scale on which L aligns on, um, along E has to be faster uh, than the precession time scale um, in order for polar alignment to occur again in, uh, in hierarchical systems. And so we define a parameter T that is the ratio between the time scale of polar alignment over the time scale of precession. Um, and basically when T is greater than unity, uh, polar alignment is not possible because the, um, eccentricity, the eccentricity vector is processing, is processing too fast for polar alignment to occur. Uh, while if T is below unity, uh, polar alignment is fast enough or precession is low enough for uh, polar alignment to occur. And so we applied this uh, criterion on hierarchical triple systems. Uh, so here we can have two different disks orbiting a binary orbit. Uh, the first one is the uh, circumtriple disk that is orbiting the outer uh, hierarchical level. And these, uh, the angular momentum of this disk is trying to align with the eccentricity vector of the outer orbit. We can also have a circum inner binary disk. And in this case, the angular momentum of the inner binary disk will align, will try to align with the eccentricity vector of the inner binary. And luckily, we can compute both time scales, so the time scale of precession and the time scale of polar alignment analytically. So we can compute analytically at the T factor. And that's what we did. So uh, let's start from the circumtriple disk. Uh, this is the expression for the T factor, but mm, the algebra is not important. This is how T depend on the um, orbital parameter of the triple. Here we have the mass ratio of the inner binary. Here we have the mass ratio of the outer uh, binary of the outer orbit. Uh, different colors are different semi-major axis ratios and different uh, line styles are different eccentricity. But the point is that uh, in the vast majority of the parameter space, this factor is above unity. And so um, this is telling us that for uh, a hierarchical triple, C, I mean, a disk orbiting an hierarchical triple, a circumtriple disk um, is not able to polarly align. We can retrieve polar alignment only reducing a lot the mass ratio of the inner binary uh, or reducing a lot this major axis ratio. Uh, but this means reducing the hierarchical triple to a binary. So, and we know that there polar alignment is always possible under the right conditions. We did the same kind of analysis. Oh, and there is also a dependency on the disk properties uh, hidden here. Uh, so we can also have polar alignment in, a, in hierarchical triples around an hierarchical triple if the disk is very small. Uh, but for typical disk, we have, this is the situation. Uh, we did also this with, uh, with this analysis around the, um, uh, on the circum inner binary disk. And what we find is the opposite. Uh, we find that in the most part of the parameter space, T is below unity. And so polar alignment is possible around um, inner binaries of a hierarchical system. So what we concluded is that um, the polar orbit around a, a hierarchical triple is not stable, while a polar orbit around an inner binary of an hierarchical triple is stable. So here polar alignment can occur, here it can't. So we tested, we tested this with Phantom. Um, we used Phantom because SPH is the best option we have uh, when we go into this misaligned stuff. And also because Phantom is the best code in uh, solving SPH equations. So this was a natural choice. Um, I implemented in Phantom the possibility of building hierarchical triples in, for my 2022 paper. And for this work, I implemented also the possibility of um, like setting up accretion disks around, around different hierarchical levels of hierarchical systems. First of all, we compared a circumbinary disk and a circumtriple disk. What we did is uh, we started from a binary. We splitted one of the two binary stars in an inner binary. Uh, in a way that the um, orbital parameters of the outer orbit of the triple uh, are the same as the one as the original binary. Um, then we surrounded both systems, the binary and the triple, with the same accretion disk, 
uh, tilted by 70 degrees, so well above the critical angle for polar alignment for binary criteria. Um, and we run the simulation. The point is that we expect here uh, with binary criteria, again, that the disk will polarly align because the, the, the inclination is above the threshold. Uh, and I mean, the orbital elements are the same here. So we expect with binary criteria that also this disk will polarly align. But if we compute the T factor, it is greater than unity. And so we expect that polar alignment will not happen. So we run the simulation and we measured uh, the uh, tilt and the um, longitude of the ascending node of both the circumbinary disk and circumtriple disk. And what we found is that um, the circumbinary disk, actually the, the inclination of the circumbinary disk uh, os start oscillating around nearly 90 degrees, uh, while the um, longitude of the ascending node, omega, is uh, oscillating around a fixed value as well. Uh, and this is what we expect when a disk is going polar. If we look at the um, circumtriple disk, uh, it's behaving a lot. Uh, I mean, the behavior is very different. Uh, the mutual inclination beta is a part of our oscillation is reducing with time, and the time scale of uh, the decay of this um, inclination is uh, the around the viscous time scale, and also uh, omega is processing with time. And these two behaviors are what we expect when a disk is going coplanar. Uh, so actually, what we found with the numerical simulations um, is that. A circumtriple disk is kind of behaving as orbiting a circular binary. And this makes sense because what we're saying is that the disk is not going polar because the eccentricity vector is, process is processing too fast. And so the disk sees the eccentricity vector averaged uh, over a precession period. And the average of a processing uh, precession of the eccentricity vector is zero, is a circular orbit. And so it makes sense that the disk is behaving like that. Uh, we did also this uh, analysis for the circuminar binary disk. And again, we set up an hierarchical triple. We um, surrounded the inner binary with an accretion disk, more tilted than the critical angle for polar alignment. And here, the T factor is below unity. So we expect here polar alignment to occur. And that's what happened. So we have a tilt that is oscillating around 90 degrees and omega that is oscillating as well. So the disk is going polar around the inner binary of the uh, hierarchical triple. So we confirmed both our, uh, analytical, our analytical findings and we also, we also find, found additional insights about the dynamic of circumtriple disks. Uh, so going back to the Cecala plot, the survey of um, mutual inclinations, um, I marked with green points, again, disks that are orbiting pure binaries. Uh, with red points, disks that are orbiting uh, the inner binary of an hierarchical system, and with blue points, disks that are orbiting um, the outer orbit of an hierarchical system. And things are seems to work because uh, we have that uh, polar disks are orbiting hierarchical system in an orbits, the, the red points here, um, and maybe binaries. We have no clear detection for that, uh, but that's possible. I mean, I'm not excluding this. Uh, and we have no highly misaligned disks orbiting a hierarchical, a hierarchical systems out of orbit. Uh, this, is, this is crossed because this is G Tauri A. Uh, as I said, we don't know very well the astrometry of the system, uh, so we have two possible mutual inclinations, but hydrodynamical models are saying that this is the, the correct point, uh, in agreement, again, with our finding. The only problem is that uh, the, I mean, I, I know that the statistic is very poor, so that's a, a huge problem. Uh, but we'll discuss this uh, in the end of the talk. Uh, but if we trust this kind of distributions, um, the distribution of circumtriple disk is pretty different uh, compared to the circumbinary disks. And this is strange because we found that circumtriple disk should behave as circumbinary disks, and we expect the initial condition to be nearly the same. Uh, so this is strange that the outcome in an evolved population uh, is uh, so different. And we are suggesting that uh, the origin of this discrepancy is again due to um, the secular evolution of the orbital parameter of the triples. Indeed, we know that if uh, um, an hierarchical triple has the inner binary and the outer binary misaligned, uh, under the right condition, they uh, start oscillating. Uh, the mutual inclination is oscillating due to causal lead of oscillations. And so in this plot, this is the, um, a solution for this kind of oscillations. And this is the, in, uh, the inclination between the two binary planes, the two hierarchical levels, 
and also the eccentricity oscillating as well. So the, I mean, you're doing something like this. Uh, and the point is that if at some point the disk that is sketched in a, as a gray plane um, is uh, aligned with the system, this kind of oscillation uh, can tilt, change the orientation of the orbits. And so they can uh, change the um, inclination between the disk and the orbital plane. And this is not due to viscous evolution. This is not something that the disk is doing, uh, but is um, due to n body dynamic. Uh, and, so, um, and so the point is that the disk is, uh, the, the system is evolving, uh, but the disk is not able to keep up with the uh, period of oscillation. And so with this idea, we could explain this distribution. Um, so this, uh, and we can explain because this distribution is different from the pure binary one. These are nice results because uh, the point is that uh, we were interpreting wrongly this plot and taking into account multiplicity, this plot is telling us uh, a different story in which multiplicity, multiplicity is the main character. We have to take uh, multiplicity into account. <clears throat> Uh, at the beginning of this talk, however, I um, told you that we can say something about the initial condition of a stellar formation um, looking at this kind of distribution. And so I would like to give you some uh, highlights of what we are working on right now. This is very work in progress. But the point is that um, let's suppose we have three ingredients, uh, the evolution of the mutual misalignment, so a recipe for evolve the mutual misalignment of disks, that basically is uh, we have this threshold and we know that disks above this threshold will go polar and disks that below, below this threshold will go coplanar. And let's suppose we have also um, an initial distribution for the mutual inclination and the eccentricity. With these ingredients, we can compute the fraction of polar disks in an evolved population, what you expect to observe in an evolved population, and also the distribution of polar disks with respect to uh, the orbital eccentricity. And this is what we did. So we started from a uh, bait simulation as well, sorry. Um, we computed in, the, uh, in this kind of uh, simulations, the uh, distribution of the initial mutual angle and initial eccentricity that they are finding in, in those simulations. Uh, we did this um, with the help of a um, PhD student that is working with bait, is uh, Daniel Elsender. And with the recipe, uh, we, we evolved like this uh, distribution and we obtained a probability density function uh, for polarly aligned disks expecting an evolved population. Um, integrating over uh, this, uh, this probability density function, we find the uh, fraction of disks that we expect to be polar in an evolved population. And with these initial conditions, uh, we find that we expect like 7% of uh, circuminder binary disks. Uh, so in, in the triple population, we know that circum triple disks cannot polarly align, but this is a population of disks around the inner binary of a triple. And here we expect the 7% of disks to be polarly aligned and half of that uh, in the pure binary um, population. Uh, and this kind of match with what we are finding, but again, the statistic is poor. Um, so the point is that we can also integrate over the initial mutual angle. And in this way, we retrieve the probability density function of polar disks as a function of the eccentricity. Um, so the point is that with, I mean, these are the two only disks that you observe that are polar. <laughs> this is HD99800, and this is another one that I'm, we're not sure even if it's polar. So I was uncomfortable in drawing a, an histogram with two points, so I didn't. But I mean, it's like, like this. <laughs> um, so the point is that how we can constrain something about the initial distribution with this kind of workflow. Um, the point is that if we have different initial distribution, this is what happened. So for example, this is what I said for bait initial distribution. If we do this, uh, like if you suppose that the initial distribution is randomly distributed, so we have uh, no correlation at all with the angular momentum of forming disk and the angular momentum of forming systems and a randomly distributed eccentricity, we find completely different fraction and a completely different uh, distribution. Uh, so for example, this is telling us that the, uh, I mean, the hypothesis that there is no correlation in the beginning 
uh, of the cellular for, of the multiple cellular system formation uh, is cannot be. We we, we need um, correlation between the angular momenta uh, to obtain so small uh, fraction. But the point is that we are not even. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not trusting completely this kind of distribution. They are not even obtained with phantom. I mean, uh, but <laughs> uh, the point is that we're not sure we can trust this. Uh, but with higher uh, statistic, we can draw uh, this kind of uh, histograms of the population. And so we can find what's uh, better matching our uh, statistic. And, and we can, for example, parameterize the position uh, of this peak or the slope of the curve as a function of the parameters of the initial distribution. And so fitting this plot, uh, we can fit something about the initial conditions. So uh, these are my conclusion. The two uh, take home messages are that we do, I mean, do not underestimate the power of multiplicity. Uh, we saw that secular evolution matters. Uh, hierarchical triples are not nearly binaries, uh, but behave qualitatively different. And we see this because the uh, population uh, of disks behaves very different around the different um, multiplicity. Uh, so we find that binaries are most cycloplanar, and this can be a problem because, uh, I mean, we expect some kind of initial misalignment also in binaries, and we expect the time scale for dissipating these mutual inclination is around the viscous time scale. So, I mean, we would expect more disks that are not coplanar. But also we found that polar alignment works differently in system with more than two stars. And so uh, the outer disk is not able to polarly align, uh, and the disk around the inner um, hierarchical levels of hierarchical systems are able to. And in general, also the uh, distribution in, in the tilt of circumtriple disk can, I mean, is telling us a story that is related to embody dynamics more than viscous evolution. Uh, but in addition, with grid power comes uh, grid possibility. Uh, indeed, multiple cellular systems are complex. We can exploit this uh, complexity uh, to constrain something about stellar formation and so about molecular cloud and where um, stars form. Uh, up to now, we just, we're just finding that um, that can be a nice result. I mean, sometimes this is a, this is a, a debate. Uh, we need correlation in the initial condition uh, between the angular momentum of the forming disk and the forming systems. But with higher statistics in the future, we will be able to actually constrain this initial distribution. And so with this, I thank you for the attention and I'm happy to take questions. Thanks, Simone, for the great talk. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Great talk. Um, I was so you were showing lots of results of how the triple or binary talks the disk, but have you looked at how the disk talks the in a binary or triple? Uh, that's interesting, uh, but actually. I mean, we use uh, not so heavy disks, and so the impact on the system uh, is not, um, I mean, it's negligible at this point. Uh, and also you can see this because just a small insight on like this plot. Um, we computed Omega uh, because the, um, Omega depends on the, the direction of the eccentricity vector of the binary. Uh, and the eccentricity vector is processing. So actually what we're seeing here is that this, uh, the, the disk is oscillating like the, the black line because the disk is locked uh, to the, um, the eccentricity vector of the binary. And so uh, while it's oscillating around the, the eccentricity vector of the binary, it's also processing with the binary. In this, uh, indeed, this dashed line is omega computed as a, with a fixed uh, reference uh, in space, and we see that the uh, these two omega differs because the the um, inner binary is slowly processing, and so the disk is like oscillating around the eccentricity vector while it's processing with the binary, and so actually the binary is able to um, to shift the disk, and, and I mean the disk is locked to the binary and it's not affecting the the evolution. Maybe with more massive disk, this could be a thing. Uh, my other question was, so the, your triple stuff probably obviously depends on the uh, the hierarchy, right? So the 
ratio between inner and outer orbit. Uh, Sorry, in, what depends on the hierarchy? Uh, the the ratio of the outer and inner orbital separations. Oh yeah, I mean it's kind of the opposite. I mean, in order to be hierarchical, you need this kind of hierarchy. Yeah, but, in order to be uh, stable. But for example, if you have an even smaller inner binary, yeah. the uh, precession time scale is longer, so some of the disks might be able to be aligned. Yeah, exactly. That. This is what happened, like, uh, sorry. What's happening here is that the uh, mass ratio of the inner binary, for example, is uh, going to very small values. And so the, um, I mean, the third body is negligible and the precession is very slow. And so we can retrieve polar alignment in this region, yeah. But, so do you think that will if, uh, kind of determine the initial parameter distribution of triples like, that drives the... Um, well, one has to check the, how these two distributions are uh, distributed. And usually uh, this is, for sure, this is not the, the vast majority of these of systems. Maybe we, we can have some configuration like this, but it's, it is it's not the norm. And it, uh, yeah, because they also, they are also, I mean, it's, yeah, that's the point. Uh, it depends in statistics, but. Does anyone have any other questions? Regarding if, if the disk is massive, I think what happens is that instead of aligning exactly at 90 degrees, we will align the generalized uh, polar alignment angle. It's a bit less than 90. It's 80 degrees in if you take a very massive disk. This was demonstrated by Lubov and Martin. Uh, so that's what you might expect if you have a very heavy disk around, I think. Yeah, and also, yeah, completely true. I mean, you see also here that uh, the disk is not massless, and so the um, polar angle is not 90 degrees. Let's thank our speaker once again.